Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Hit the like button and please subscribe. It helps my channel out a whole lot and I appreciate it so much. Thank you again. Um, Dems are panicking over potential Pelosi's loss. Mm -hmm. As much as there is an infighting and struggling to fund GOP and swing state races for the U.S. Senate, it would appear that major donors for the Democratic Democrat Party <laughs> are signaling. I'm just so excited over Pelosi. <laughs> are you signaling that there is no point fighting for the U.S. House? Okay. According to Political, there are several House seats where the GOP is vulnerable, like Rep. Representative Mike Garcia in California's 25th Congressional District, where no money is being spent. House Democrats are panicking over the decision to leave Republicans like RC eventually untouched in a year where the data is still indicating a major red wave. The problem isn't campaigns though, it's money. The decision according to those involved was driven by relative lack of resources. As Republicans' biggest house super PAC, PAC, floods the election with hundreds of millions of dollars. Their Democrat uh, counterparts have lagged far behind. Some members of the California Democratic delegation were alarmed by the decision to leave Garcia's district untouched, and they have urged their party's campaign arm in recent weeks not to abandon a seat that President Joe Biden won by double digits, according to multiple people familiar with the discussions. Similar pleas are coming from Texas, Pennsylvania, and elsewhere, as frustrated Democrats bemoan that their party's outside groups are unable, or some say privately unwilling, to devote precious funds toward what they see as winnable seats. Uh, my cats are playing with their toys. Angel, get in here. Oh, dear. The fact uh, that this is in Nancy Pelosi's own backyard is Garcia's case is extremely telling. The donor class of the Democratic Party is struggling to fund a reason to try and flip seats in a year when most analysts are predicting the House will flip to the GOP. Angel, please go lay down. My little girl, Angel, just got up now. If you're going to play, play nice, okay? I'll be done here in a minute. House Democrats' panic has escalated this month as GOP outside groups continue to smash fundraising records. Despite high candidate fundraising, Democrats have been unable to respond with the same volume of money, and the party has struggled to free up the resources to attack potentially endangered Republican incumbents. A crucial part of their strategy, since they need to offset expected losses more in more conservative uh, Democratic held districts. It is a pretty clear sign that Democratic donors are just giving up. Mm -hmm. And this report comes on the heels of yesterday's disastrous inflammation. It's not inflammation, people. I don't know where I come up with that word. It's inflation report. <laughs> now listen here. Uh, sorry about that, people. There is virtually no chance that the donors are up to save a party that is in this deep. This, this sentiment also matches a lot of the polling you'll see. There's not much excitement for the Democrats on the issue that affect Americans most. Inflation, gas prices, and the economy as a whole. With yesterday's inflation news being the last major infl Im inflation report before the midterms elections take place, is pretty much ingrained in the minds of Americans that despite passing an Inflation Reduction Act, the Democrats have only made the situation worse. Yes, we all agree on that, don't we? I bet there's 90, maybe 90% 90 of us that agree on that. 85 to 90. I'll give the others a benefit of the doubt. <laughs> and the people who choose to spend their money on campaigns and elections don't see much value in supporting a party that almost appears dead set on losing this one. They focused on all the wrong issues, picked fights over things Americans didn't care about, 
Boy, isn't that the truth. Really, that is the truth. And sending the taxpayers' money to countries we had no business sticking our nose in. And no telling what else was going on behind our backs with all these other countries. Sure, those Democratic donors feel the same way that the Democratic Party does on the issues of abortion, Donald Trump, and social issues. But they also know there's just no strategic value in investing in the party right now. Instead, they'll hold on to their money until the next election cycle because they want to support the Democrats keeping the White House at all costs. Mm -mm. Another two years of this mess we're in right now? No, no, no. No. And we're getting involved now in others' threats that we had nothing to do with. Like blowing up those uh, oil pipelines. Um, I can't remember. i got to do an article on that. But uh, they're accusing us of doing that now. Yeah, the Americans. The U.S. Why would we blow up someone else's oil pipelines? I, that's childish. It's it's drastic, but it's still stupid. It speaks to either the level of dedication to the campaigns or the level of delusion that a lot of Democrats think they cannot hold, only hold close races, but actually flip a lot of seats. It would be one thing if they were just focused on maintaining, but to actually try to aggressively go after GOP seats in the current climate is just a poor use of resources. I don't blame the donors for not wanting to go along with it. And this article, original article, Democrats panic as donors signal that the House has lost red state. I mean, you know, the words speak for themselves right here. They sure do. Now, I will get an article going on uh, what uh, I heard on another uh, deal today. Now, I heard someone mention someone else's channel. And evidently, they don't get in trouble for that. So, I'm going to say that I heard, because I go to Stephen Gardner's all the time. Yeah, as much as possible when I can make it. Uh, I hardly ever miss. But um, he had a lot of good in his video today. And... I wouldn't say it's good, good, because we're being blamed for blowing up that pipeline with a great big explosive. We had nothing, I don't think we had anything to do with it. You know what, though? I have to kind of wonder. We're getting blamed for it, but who's the rat that's putting us in the way of blame? Good question. Darn good question. All right, let's uh, go on here with something else. I just don't know. And here comes Mr. Obama. Who else? Obama blasts liberal and cancels culture and shocking podcast interview. Now, I've got to do a little organization here. Or I won't get to see everything that there is. I'm hoping I won't lose my camera. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Obama blasts liberal cancel culture and shocking podcast interview. In a podcast interview, former President Barack Obama gave advice to Democrats as they enter the final weeks before the November elections. He said that they should avoid being buzzkills, B-U-Z-Z-K-I-L-L-S, buzzkills, and that they should stop with cancel culture. During an interview with the host of the podcast, Pod Save America, Obama discussed a wide range of topics such as the war in Ukraine and the Supreme Court. However, when it came to the upcoming elections, he gave Democrats some advice. During the interview, Dan Pfeiffer, who was a senior advisor during Obama's time in office, opened the show by asking about the upcoming elections. According to Pfeiffer, 
I think that's Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer. It's P-F-E-I-F-F-E-R. I'm going to say Pfeiffer. Bobo, please settle down for a minute. Oh, that boy's going to drive me crazy. That's the new baby. He is, oh, talk about a riot. He can cause one. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> the Democrats are getting serious about the situation because the country is in poor economic environment. However, unlike 210, 2010, they have a few powerful arguments that are helping sway voters. He said that the Democrats can win by pushing narratives that can paint the Republicans as extreme. For instance, they can use the January 6th riot in Washington for an example of how extreme the party is. Obama was then asked if he thought these issues could be in integrated into a cohesive message during the campaign. The main message that Obama wants to send to voters is that democracy Dem Democrat <clears throat> hang on folks oh boy democracy should be preserved pat myself on the back he also said hey now that's enough come on kid now settle down I'll get spray bottle you better go lay down yeah I have a spray bottle and I also got a gun <laughs> it's got a little button on it and it gives off uh, sonic waves, you know, and it kind of hurts their ears. It's a real shriek sound. I can't hear it, but they can. And that settles them down a little bit. Uh, he also said the Democrats need to find a way to build a durable majority in the Congress. Obama said that the Democrats should avoid being buzzkills. He noted that they sometimes get carried away by the success of his family and work. He also said that people sometimes want to feel that they are walking on eggshells. He said that everyone can make mistakes, that everyone should acknowledge that life is messy. Yeah, well, it can get terribly messy, can it? Obama also addressed the issue of Democrats' fascination with cancel culture. He said that this idea was a losing proposition. And that's the end of that item, article. And let's go back where he says, he said that this idea was a losing proposition. Cancel culture? Hmm. I have to think on that one. Why would anybody want to cancel our culture? You know, isn't that the root of our existence? our culture, if that's the way they mean it, I don't know. Well, listen, I'm going to settle down my kids, and then I will be back. Stay tuned. I'll be back right after this message. I'm going to shoot me some dogs and cats. <laughs> you, you are very special, and you are a blessing. I'll be back.